Hello and welcome to another episode of Lore and Loot. Today we're traveling to Vivek City, and it's time to get a full tour of the biggest city in Vardenfell. Now this city is so large that I can't do this in one episode, so we're going to split this one up into three. Vivek City, or Vivek for short, is massive, and for a lot of people, it's easy to get lost in. The first time you play, I can totally agree with this sentiment, but the more you spend time here, the easier it is to navigate, and it really isn't complicated at all. Vivek is named after Vivek, one of the three members of the tribunal, the gods of the tribunal temple religion. This is his capital of sorts. Vivek is in the Escadian Isles region and is composed of nine cantons. These cantons are little man-made islands. Each canton can be thought of as its own little town, with each of them having its own tavern, sleeping accommodations, housing, and shops. Being the biggest city on the island of Ardenfell, there's every type of travel system here. You can arrive by boat, by silt strider, or by mage's guild guide. You can also find small gondolas, little rafts that can take you from canton to canton so you don't have to hoof it if you don't want. Alright, let's get a broad overview of the city. As I said, there are nine cantons. Each of them is comprised of multiple levels. Every canton has a lowest level, the underworks, which is just a nice way of saying the sewers. Imagine everything that can live in the sewers, and you find that in the underworks. There are rats and other nasty animals, there are criminals hiding out in the sewers, uh, attempting to avoid the law, and there are creatures and monsters there as well. Blighted or corpus monsters, ghosts, and other undead. The next level up of all the cantons is the canal works. Depending on the canton, this can be where the poorest people live, though sometimes you can find shops or ancestral tombs in this level as well. There are trapdoors that lead from the underworks to the canal works. The next level up is the waste works. This is the heart of all the cantons, typically. Here you will find most of the shops, taverns, and some residences, and most of the NPCs. Each canton's waste work is a little different, but most of them have multiple levels you can access. Finally, there's the top level, the plaza. The plaza is a domed room at the very top of the cantons, usually with either the most expensive homes, the best shops, or in the case of the foreign quarter, the guilds, and in the case of the arena, the arena itself. So that's the most basic structure of each of the cantons. Now we can take a look at each of them individually. The first canton you're likely to see and encounter if you're visiting Vivek for the first time is the foreign quarter. Now, importantly, all modes of fast travel lead into or right next to the foreign quarter, with the ship and silt strider ports right outside the city, across the bridge, and the guild guide inside the mage's guild in the plaza level. The foreign quarter, historically, was the only canton where outlanders were allowed. Thus, the foreign quarter is where all of the imperial services are provided. In the plaza level, you'll see the mage's guild as well as the fighter's guild, there are also two smiths on this level. The foreign quarter is unique in that it actually has its waste works divided into upper and lower waste works. The upper waste works has a few vendor stalls and not much else. The lower waste works has a lot more interesting stuff. Some places of note include Jobasha's Rare Books and the Black Shalk Corner Club. Taking the stairs down into the canal works, you'll notice that the foreign quarters canal works is divided into two sections. On one side, you'll find a general goods store, a clothier, as well as the imperial cult shrine. No surprise, they threw them in the basement. The two sections are connected by the foreign quarter tomb, a lengthy dungeon full of leveled undead. The other side has a healer, but most importantly, another bookstore. Samin Ferlin's Bookstore, a place we will visit in depth later on. Finally, we'll delve into the Underworks, where the most notable location is a Daedric Shrine, of all things. Ibishimus is a shrine to Malakath, and is guarded by three hostile orc worshippers. The Redoran Canton is next, just south of the Foreign Quarter. 
The plaza level has the Sarin Manor and the Draler Manor, and importantly, the Redder and Treasury, which leads down to the vaults. Here you can find an enormous amount of gold and loot locked behind iron bars. The Wasteworks is a typical layout. The most interesting location is the Redoran prison cells, which connects back to the treasury. There's a tavern here too, the Flowers of Gold. The Canal Works has the Redoran Ancestral Vault, guarded by undead and, strangely, a leveled ash creature, but nothing else of note. The Underworks has a small sixth house altar, which is guarded by an ancestral ghost. Now, just west of the Redoran Complex is the House Lalu Canton which is connected via a bridge to the mainland and the road that leads to Ebenhurt. As you would expect, the Lalu Canton houses the house Lalu members. The plaza level has various merchants, the Elven Nations Corner Club, the No Name Club, and, of course, Curio Manor. Anyone who has played the house Lalu questline knows about Crassius Curio. Don't worry, you will meet and be forced to talk to Uncle Crassius eventually. The Elven Nations has an entrance in the Wasteworks as well, but most interesting here is the Lalu Treasury, which, like the Redoran one, houses many treasures. Though probably not as large in terms of total loot, the Lalu Vaults are arguably better secured. Unlike the Redoran, the Lalu also house their records in their canton, and you can see the collection of books and scrolls and tomes here. The Lalu prison houses only one prisoner. Back outside, the Lalu have a temple in the lower level of the Wasteworks. It's undergoing some renovations. There isn't much of interest in the Canal Works other than the Ancestral Tomb, which instead of being guarded by spirits, is actually the hideout of some Kimona Tong thugs. And finally, the Sewers. There's a part of the wall here that has broken off, and you can find the skeleton of a drowned man with a locked chest. Aside from rats and slaughterfish, the only other living creature down here is a dreamer, just standing about. We'll learn about dreamers when we explore the sixth house in more depth. We next head to the Telvani compound, the easternmost canton of the city. It connects via bridge to the mainland, a small peninsula which leads to the Daedric ruins of Ald Sotha. The Telvani compound is just east of the Arena Canton. The Telvani Plaza is home to the Telvani Tower, which leads both to the Telvani Jail as well as the more interesting Telvani Vaults. As you would expect, the security here is tight. To guard the Telvani treasures, one of the rooms is guarded by ordinators while the other is actually guarded by Atronax. Back in the plaza, there is nothing really else of note. There is a storage room and a few places of residence, but not much else. In the Wasteworks, we will find some typical Telvanni merchants, an alchemist enchanter, as well as places where you can buy spells. The local tavern is the Lizard's Head, and there's a reason for the name. If you explore the bottom floor, you'll see the mounted head of an Ergonian. In the bottom level, there's a temple, which is a bit rare for the Telfani, but I guess they have to put on appearances. As you can tell, it's not used very often, more of a storage room than anything. In the canal works, you'll find a few slaves being guarded. You can free them if you're so inclined. The other place of interest is the Telfani Monster Lab. Inside, you'll find some centurion spiders as well as an altar off to the right here with some materials. Further inside is a centurion sphere behind a trapdoor. And even deeper in is a strange room with a steam centurion as well as a sphere. 
Two small altars on either side of the room. The one on the right has some gold in front of it and a dagoth dagger behind the kneeling pad. Finally, the underworks. It's quite fairly unremarkable, actually, compared to all the other ones we've seen so far. The only thing of note is in the southeast portion, what looks to be like uh, the little stash of a smuggler. Small rowboat here with two paddles, as well as a collection of barrels, baskets, and crates full of randomized typical container loot. And that's actually going to do it for this episode of Lore and Loot. In the next episode, we'll take a look at three more cantons, the Arena, St. Delin, and St. Olms. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Lore and Loot, and I'll see you next time.